these lights are so strong, I can't see a thing. But I hear you. I know there are people in the room besides these guys. There you, oh, there it goes, and now we're all in the dark. And back up again, thank you. I didn't realize I had that control. You are God. Exciting. I am God, I am God. That's right, I forgot for a second. I forget that ever since they made me not God. We'll get into that later. We're gonna have a therapy session. We're gonna work all of it out, but right now, I'd like to bring on today, oh, well, we've got the stage managers We're setting up. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, gonna go. All right, well, we've got, uh, we've got one, two, three, four powerhouse ladies hitting the stage right now. That's right. It's Kim Rose, Brianna Buckmaster, Sam Smith, and Ruth. Stop, never stop stopping. Never stop, never stopping. Never, never stop, never stop. There you go, there you go. Rock Benedict, everyone. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I, can, I, can you see? I'm blinded by the lights. No. Blinded by the lights. Rose up on the douche, baby. Could you all just wave your arms in the air so we can see? Oh, there you are. Oh, they're all the way to the back. Hello. You keep those arms waving for the whole panel, please. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, and hands up who's new, who's not been taking measure yet. Welcome. See? Everybody else, try not to savage them straight away. <laughs> savage them. Too late. I don't know how you would do that. About I savage some oh sausage in the green room. You that is not a euphemism. You have a pillow on me. You get to look, I'm being cuddled. Oh no, that's gonna tie, that's Cass, fuck you. <laughs> it's a fine line. Fine line with those pillows. Yeah, there's, there's some that's red, and even that's confusing because there's like Charlie, it could be Abaddon. That could be anybody, yeah. We only accept uh, pillows that are pillows of us. So if anybody has a pillow that's not us, um, please leave right now. Thank you so much. Half the audience gets up and leaves. <laughs> oh, wait, no, 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 she didn't mean it. Oh, my God. Um, how, how are you? How was karaoke last night? Off the chain. I, I have to say, and I'm not just saying this because I'm from New Jersey. This was it was among the best karaoke in creation history. I have yes. noticed. So the singing is... and the enthusiasm. And judging from their lagging applause this morning, good night. Everybody had a few wobbly pops last night. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was very uh, well done. A. Oh, and I knocked over the karaoke. Thing. Yeah, on purpose? Sure did. Rock and roll! Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> I went running by like, like, what the? And everyone's like. <laughs> girl. Out of girl. Let's just get two drinks, Sally. Wait, why'd they turn on the light? Are they, are they closing the bar? <laughs> what happened? Did the lights go up? The lights went up. So every And uh. everyone's leaving. Oh. I'm not. It is, she didn't mean it about the pillows. You can see. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. Alright. I think they're getting in line to ask questions. Oh, you oh. want to ask it? Never mind. Oh. Unfuck you then. Um, <laughs> I take it back. Hello. Oh, Kyle, ka we love you so much. I love these chairs. Hello. Look how fast you can go. Hello. They're good. Wait, do you oh. need help? <laughs> I got you. Alright. Kim, you push that side. I'll get this side. Okay, ready? Keep your legs in though, don't hurt us. Oh, stop, stop, stop! <laughs> it's too much, it's too much. Breathe. Oh. As the birthday queen, would you like to pick our first question? Yes, okay. What's your name? Where are you from? What do you want? <laughs> you, you asked me that six years ago and you said it so fast, I never 
understood what you had said. So that was, that was pretty good. Um, I'm Amanda. I live in New Jersey. And I would like to ask a question of all four of you, uh, I guess. How, how, how we do this? Um, I would like a task for a Rachel Minor story. I'm going to let Kim tell the story about my birthday, uh, which must have been three or four years ago, because it's a good one. So I've checked with her on this, so this is okay to share. Um, one of Rachel's deep fears is being a trouble to people. And uh, I know, right? So already, this just shows that the fears on the insides of our hearts do not come from the reality of the outside's world. So be patient with our little heart fears when we tell you what they are. So uh, for Brianna's birthday, we were gonna go out, we were in Chicago, and we were gonna go out, and um, it was close to the venue, so we were gonna walk. And Rachel's like, no, that's fine. And we're like, no, Rachel, we want you with us. We Come, come, come with us, come with us. And three blocks to the venue, her wheelchair battery died. <laughs> watching this little this little flower bloom where she was like oh no my friends love me I'm not a problem um, so that was just it just she just warms my heart so much what a beautiful thing to be like my biggest fear is being experienced and it's a kind of wonderful and amazing and funny um, pardon me uh, <laughs> didn't I lint rolled yesterday but I need to lint roll now. Excuse me. Can you help me? Um, my Rachel story is a bit shallower. Where um, I said she's just got a little bit of a kink, doesn't she, Rachel? A little bit. And I, I sent her some sexy lace tights, and she bought me a lycra dress. <laughs> we sent each other sexy clothes in the post. <laughs> We're both happy with our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know her yet. I met her at a convention. And she rolled in um, covered in glitter. Oh, yeah. And I thought that's just how she always was. Because it fit so well. And then she's like, oh, oh. And then, well, actually, I think it is. I think she does have glitter all the time. I just, she is um, the sparkle inside and out matches to me. Um, and she's optimistic and positive and calm. And she, we all know she's like otherworldly, you know. And uh, I, I guess that was just from the get-go. I was like, oh, she's somebody who you know exactly who she is from the minute you meet her. Yeah. yeah, she's the best. We miss her. We love her so much. She's such an important person on this planet. I don't have a particular story, but just to echo what these ladies are saying is that um, she's the kind of person that teaches you just how to be on this planet. She's so human and generous and she can see inside of you. She's the kind of person that will know something's up and she won't ask, she'll just sit down and go, how are you? You know, and then you're, me! <laughs> she doesn't want that for you, but she's always, she just always knows what up. So she is, she is otherworldly and we're so lucky to have her. So, so lucky, we miss her so much. Yeah, and so talented, so incredibly talented and we're so happy, right, that she um, did those episodes that she got to do, it was yeah. one of the, one of the highlights for me of the entire 15 seasons of Supernatural to see Rachel do her thing. I have another one. Do you want another one? Okay, so uh, she was at our apartment and then we drove her home and then my car died outside of the... In, in the... Because mm -hmm, I'm fucking classy and I drive fancy fucking classy cars. Uh, so my car died at the hotel and um, my child was with us and Rachel and my daughter spent an hour and a half playing tag in the lobby of the hotel, happily. Um, so yeah, that's that, and that's how my daughter refers to, I'm like, Rachel, and she's like, oh, is that the unicorn I played tag with? And that's how we, that's how we refer to Rachel in our house, the unicorn you played tag with, yes. I hope somebody sends Rachel this clip. And just, like, 
Like, oh, she's recording it. She got, she got us. Rachel, we love you. Everyone, everyone, everyone together. After three, one, two, three. Rachel, we love you! We did good? Good. Aw, oh, thank you so much for that question and for giving us a little bit of Rachel in this panel because we miss her so deeply. Beat that! Uh, yeah, I don't think I can. Um, anyways, um, probably most people agree with me that we can't imagine other people playing your characters that we've grown to love. But if you could switch with one another, what other character would you play? Uh, of, of, of the four of us of or anybody on the show? Yeah. No, of the four of you. <sighs> I think all four of us would play Rowena. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kim, because... Uh, my my answer is a Rowena answer, which is like I just want to be Rowena. Like, do you know? But like, but thank you for saying it, so I didn't say like that. So uh, <laughs> it's part of your birthday week. Um, I don't know. That's really uh, they're all for like different reasons. No one would pick Mary. <laughs> I don't know. I pick Mary. Mary. I think Mary's had like this great emotional arc and and personal arc as a woman and a mother, and I she, think she speaks to like being a mother on the show and how that doesn't have to look like baking pies or burning on ceilings. How it can <laughs> and fighting, yeah, it can mean fighting, is standing up for yourself, boundaries, having sex, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but mothers tend to have sex. <laughs> It's a bit of a famous thing, actually. Um, so, apart from Hail Mary, well, don't get me started on that. Um, but uh, also, just a fun acting challenge is to think about how each of us would play each other's characters. And also, those characters would not be the same. They would be so different. I don't think anybody, though, could have made Sheriff Donna, Sheriff Donna, Brianna, to be fair. Oh, I agree. I, yeah, I think you're the only person who could have come <laughs> along and, and did what you did with your part. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. So I was wondering what color you guys associate yourselves with and why? Ourselves as people or characters? People. I think I'm usually red. When my daughter asks me what my favorite color is, I always say red. This, this person's too. <laughs> just the two of you, though. Yeah, just room. us. Everybody else is like, ugh, yikes. Um, I don't wear a ton of red, but I do tend to gravitate towards it and its meaning. But um, yeah, I guess. Periwinkle. I was going to say that next. Damn it. I don't wear it or paint my walls that color or have my car that color, but when I see it, it brings me joy. Yay! It's my interference. Are you going to analyze this afterwards? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Does yours begin with a B? <laughs> no, I don't. I only wear black because it's super easy and I don't have to think about it. Right. I'm like... <laughs> I just, my, my brain is like, ah, too hard, ah. And so this is the most I can deal with is silhouette when I just wear one color. I'm not like, I don't think I'm a black interior soul sort of goth kid. I think I'm more of like a, like a, like a, like an apple green. Oh, well, that's the color of the heart chakra. I see yeah, that for you. that's, yep. Yeah. Can I have two? Am I allowed two? Uh, uh, burgundy, like wine, like Merlot like color. color. Like your blazer? Yeah, I like that is, is color. Is yellow the other one? Um, <laughs> I actually think this is more of a Brianna color, the, the luminous mm -hmm. yellow. It's definitely uh, a Donna color, that's for sure. Yeah, I actually, and I also really like um, kind of mossy green, because it, I think of it as Scotland is like being green. Dear, Glasgow means dear green place, and I, so yeah, so I've got two, sorry. Those are good. I, yeah. I, Col colors are really important. Yeah. And they're not, like you said, they're not colors that you necessarily wear, but they're colors that you gravitate towards or some, for some reason identify with or whatever. Yeah. Great question. Oh, well, yeah. Thank you. Well, Brianna, you do frequently say, don't ask me anything other than what my favorite color is <laughs> on Saturday morning. So people are taking Very notes. Very true. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
It's because I'm actually not hungover this morning. You're welcome. I have a farther question for Samu. What color is periwinkle? Oh. Periwinkle is like. A, Who's wearing periwinkle? A light blue with some lavender in it. Yeah. Oh. See if we can find it's like, some it's on It's literally me. like a fairy. Like it's like the prittiest bluey no, purple. Yeah. Steel. Okay. Closer to blue than purple. Yeah. Like a lavender. <laughs> like a lavender blue. No. Yes, but not quite lavender. You have every color but in between blue. sky blue and lavender. Blue. <laughs> but I like all these colors too. They're all. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a second, I got you! <laughs> Need an example of a color, and now I shall strip. Krista. There. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Not quite purple. Okay. Okay. God, yeah. I'm just learning things up here. Redo. Speaking of red. Hi. Hi. Uh, I like your cat suit. Oh, thank you. Is inspired by you? I can see. You look fabulous. Well Thank done. Thank you. Uh, so I'm Danielle. I'm from New York. And I'm actually asking this question on behalf of my friend Caitlin, who's in the UK. She wanted to know if there was any role you guys could play in a musical. What would it be? Ooh. Ooh. I'd be the stagehand. <laughs> um, I would... There's two, because I don't know who knows musicals here. So I'll say an old one, which would be... Um, um, Mama Rose and Gypsy. Not quite there yet, but one day, one day. It's a beautiful role for, for a woman. Very old show. Um, and then I would also love to play the lead in Waitress. Oh, you guys like that one. <laughs> Am I going next? Yeah. Okay, uh, so I was once in a Cats trio and I was the only non-singing cat in a song and dance trio. <laughs> I'd sing, sometimes sing off tune. Um, so, is, is, can I ask the question, like, if I could really sing and, like, actually as myself? Yeah. yeah. So, actually, as me, I one time had a go at, um, whatever happened, please, may I, um, from Chicago. Yeah. yeah. What's her name? Great. Uh, what's her Roxy. name? Roxy. Roxy. No, the, the, um, the mama, the, the yeah. Oh, um, Queen Latifah played her. Mama Morton. Oh, oh, oh. Mama Morton. Oh, oh, oh. Mama Morton. I think great. mama, I just, I'm just gonna say Mama Morton. That's it. That's what about my mama? That's Don't great. That's a good song, too. I would like to put people in pies. Oh. Yes. <laughs> sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. Sweeney Todd, if anybody doesn't know that. I would, pay, I would pay what I paid last night to see you do that. <laughs> if I could sing, I'd want to be Fantine. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. You are a very fun team. Like, you're just very, your journey, yes, yeah. Also, very, oh, Sam, not Sam, but, you know. If Mary. I could sing, sing, um, Griselda, is that her name? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Touch me! Like, <laughs> that? The cat, cats. cat cats. Yeah. So I'm go I've gone from cats, non-singing, to the hardest cats. To the hardest right. <laughs> no, That doesn't do any acting or dancing. She just sings. So you awesome. start here, have a few more birthday weeks, and then end up there. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. That's fun. Um, hi, quick little thing for Ruthie. My birthday's today, so have Happy fun. birthday to you. Faster. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Everybody. <laughs> oh, this lady. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. How many birthdays are here this weekend? If you guys remember, it's the best 16th birthday ever. Um, my question is, if either you as yourself or as your character could say one line to any character in the show, what, who would it be and what would you say? What? <laughs> if you could say a line as either as your character to another character or as yourself to another character, who would you say whatever line to? Like a line from the show? Or really just anything. If we could say something in the show as any character, to any character. Or as, no, as our character or as ourselves. So either Kim or Jody could say, and I'm gonna, I'm torn, um, but I think what I wish Jody had had the chance to say, but never got to say, was, the fuck, Claire? I 
I or Mary would say to both the boys, stop that. <laughs> and it applies to almost every situation. <laughs> I think as Donna, I don't know what I'd say. I think she held a lot in. So I think as Rihanna playing Donna talking to a character, I just generally blanket say, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I, I would like to say to Mark Shepard, if he had like a piece of elastic plastic over his mouth, um, as, Rubi, as Rubina to Fergus Crowley, hello boy. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Steal his line from him. Yeah, that's hello. My name is Jean. I'm from Schwanksville, Pennsylvania. It's Schwanky. I've been supernatural sober for over a year. Thank you. <laughs> My question to you is, uh, I know some of you have worked overseas, and what's the biggest difference between working in another country versus working for a U.S. or a Canadian company? Uh, the jet lag. <laughs> Final answer. It's no joke, the jet lag. It destroys you. It destroys you. I was in, we, were, we did a convention in Paris. And I literally flew in like I would a U.S. This was my mistake. Nobody else did this because people are smart here. Um, I flew in like I would an American convention hours before I started work. And then you work long hours there. Like we had like one 14-hour day. And I, you don't, your body won't let you sleep at night. You want to sleep when you're working. And then I flew home as soon as we were done. And it was so, I literally turned to, turned to Kim and I was like, how long... How much sleep can you lose before you die? Because <laughs> I, I felt so, it's so hard. It's so hard to do those conventions because of that. But they're also great because you get to meet people that are, never get to have conventions in that neck of the woods perhaps and they're so excited and um, not that you guys aren't, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's a different fandom over there so it's really exciting. Hey, somebody else talk. I like learning to cuss in different languages. Oh yeah. Can you give us some of your French? Sous me booze. Which means suck my balls in French. <laughs> I use it frequently. Did you mean um, conventions specifically or any work? Um, actually more professional work, but that was fun. <laughs> I mean, Canada doesn't totally count. It's just America with weirder potato chips. What do you mean weirder? Ketchup chips? Ketchup flavor. Don't fuck with my ketchup chips, bitch. <laughs> pickle flavor. Dill pickle chips? Yes. That's, that's literally heaven. I'm not going to fight about this. I'm right. I'm going to fight about it. Yay! I'm in the middle. <laughs> um, I think the, the most extreme example is I shot a very little piece of a movie in the Philippines and you're so like out of your element that and you're also trying to like do your work but like the food is different the language is different um, the crew like everything it's it's a little bit of an out-of-body experience but at the same time you're like the intake is on overload because you're you know you go see stuff while you're there or whatever I, I remember writing has anyone been to Manila yeah so, like, the jitney is, yeah. is, is so, so they've taken all these, are you from the Philippines? Yes. Okay, so correct, please shout at me if I'm wrong. But they took all these uh, American war jeeps that were left there and covered them in chrome and Christmas lights and, like, fancy decorations, and they're open in the back, and you just jump in them and ride around the city. Like, like a taxi, like an open bus taxi. You probably are supposed to pay, I don't know if I did. Um, and it just like, that's how you get around there. And I don't know, I just, and, but I couldn't, I didn't know what any of the food was. We're going through the lunch line and I'm like, yeah, I'll drink some Gatorade. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't know what, cause I have, you know, specific diet, whatever. Anyway, it's just, it's just interesting. And like any kind of travel, but you're also then trying to work. So you're trying to, you know, do your lines and do your scene and do your character. So it's, it, I think it dials up the um, difficulty level, but at the same time, it makes it all very, like, very exciting and like, it's, 
I don't know, am I making sense? Like it's so much information coming in at one time between the work and the place where you are. And then you always get to take a day and like go see stuff and, you know, I don't know. I like it. Um, it in America, you get paid more. <laughs> Sorry. That's a difference I noticed. It's true. <laughs> and I honestly, um, as somebody who grew up seeing the American dream and does believe in it, um, it, uh, it, people do get rewarded for if they do well in this country. And I know it's fucked up in so many ways. I know that there's a lot wrong. But I do think, um, as an artist, what I think is great in this country is if you did something, you were in Babylon 5 20 years ago, everyone's like, yeah, you were in Babylon 5 20 years ago, right? And I feel like there's a, I just, I think there's a real recognition of how hard it is to do well and the struggle in this country sometimes to do well. So if somebody does, people are really like, well done you. And I think that's a really nice um, characteristic of America that I feel was different um, from other places. Okay, so not that any of you needed it, but is there anyone that you feel that your characters could have had added into the show that they could have benefited from or had more character development with? Bobby. <laughs> is that what you mean? Like who our character could have had more story with? Um, or about our own character. Or like someone that wasn't in the show, like another girlfriend. Or Michael Fassbender. Like <laughs> I feel like we're not answering what you want us to answer. You just want to know if there's another actor that we would have liked to work with on the show. Or like type of character. Or like character. On the show. I can say that I feel like I got to work with everybody. Like, not as much as I would have liked. I think... Rowena and Mary never actually spoke. We existed and glared at each other one time. We, we had a whole scene that the director wasn't aware of. <laughs> right. We tried to make it right. come. We did make a moment when I came back out of the AU, right? We are like, yeah, we, they should have picked it up in the camera. Totally. It was a whole spin-off. I know, it was. <laughs> um, the one thing I wish is that at the beginning of season 13, there had, they had extended the Lucifer and Mary in the AU. Because it was so funny to me. We were like the odd, like the, like, like, not the, kind of like the odd couple, but we're like an old, bickering married couple. <laughs> and I loved it so much. I did get to punch him several times, though, so. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that would have been great. And of course, I mean, I, we only had the one scene right. in the basement. We had, we made we jokes had the couple. about that. We had a fight that they never filmed. Mm -hmm. So anything with these gals, of course, but um, yeah, I think I think that they missed an opportunity there. Mary and Lucy in the in the AU. Um, yeah, I would have loved to have uh, any more um, scenes. <laughs> um, but if you were to think about um, someone coming on the show. I, in, in my brain, when I was um, working on character development for Donna, I made up the story in my head that she was raised by a single father with all brothers. And I think it would be funny to have Donna's dad come on. And in my head, dad, her dad would be played by Nick Offerman. Oh, oh yeah. I wasn't sure if you'd know that reference, but fuck, I think that would be hysterical. He played Ron on Parks and Rec. So funny. Anyway. That's where I go. Always to the laugh. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name's Eileen. I was um, curious to know, like a lot of people in the fandom like really connect with certain characters. Like we say, like we're blank coded. So I was wondering if there was like a, a certain character, your own or another one where you really like personally related to. I know like I have two that I really related to. Who? Oh. Cass and Donna. Oh my god, thank you so much. <laughs> I can speak for myself that I think that the casting and the producers did such a brilliant job of casting. It's like they had x-ray into our essence of who we were. 
that we were so perfectly cast in the roles that we were cast in that I, that's what I observe in everyone else and I may be projecting, but I feel like I so understood Mary from day one, especially because like I frequently get cast as like the nice mom and that's what I was, but what I always wanted to be was Lara Croft and it's like they knew. <laughs> and then let me be that later. So I, 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 as far as like who I would play and who I identify with, it was my own character. <clears throat> I, um, I loved, um, I heard Lisa Berry's, you know, they released the, the video of her singing before I ever met her. Trailer, right? Yeah, it was gorgeous. And so I identify with just Lisa Berry <laughs> in general. And then I got to do a scene with her and, um, and her rendition of Death. And I love Julian too. I, there's something about Death as a character, uh, there's that whole thing fascinates me really. So Is that, it because it's your birthday? <laughs> it's the opposite <laughs> of my death day. It's my birthday, so I like death. death. It's very dark. Um, I can't think of any characters that I personally relate with, but honestly, the writing on that show and watching the characters, and you guys know this, of course, better than I do, to watch the character arcs of so many of those characters throughout all of those seasons, I think a lot of us can relate to because you see them go through hardships and love and heartbreak and grief. And I think that's what's kind of special about the show is that I assume that's why you all like it so much is that it's it, it kind of gets us all through these hard times because we can relate to what these characters are experiencing. So. I'm of a blanket statement on all of them. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi, ladies. Um, so just with everything going on in the world right now, including just working or being a mom or what have you, what are methods of de-stressing? Like, how do you calm yourself at the end of the day? I <laughs> Sorry. It's not Kim's thing. <laughs> That's her answer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't think I have. There's there's active de-stressing. Like I have tools that I have in my toolbox for when I have anxiety attacks, which I have experienced. I'm sure a lot of you have. And there are things that I have taken out of my life to to detract from. I just think our nervous systems are intensely overloaded. We are not built to handle all the information that is being thrown at us on a daily basis. So you withdraw. I have withdrawn from many, many things over the last couple of years. And that includes relationships, that includes social media, that includes, um, you know, things you imbibe in. But um, on a daily basis, I'm so grateful and lucky that I have the most peaceful, genuinely peaceful relationship known to man and my partner he is just like a glowing buddha and that he, he, i can come to him with anything and he's so great at communication and also listening and he never tries to make anything feel better and he just will listen to everything i say and instead of telling me how to make it better he'll just say i'm so sorry that you're experiencing that or that you have to go through that um, and that's generally all I think you need is having a person or people in your life that don't try to fix you or don't try to fix your experience, but just are there to hold space for you lovingly and gently until your system can calm itself down. Yeah, Thank you. yeah I, I honestly always like to say, and it's a thing that I've done more since I came to America because you're allowed here more. Um, I pay licensed professionals to help me. <laughs> um, yeah, and I've never regretted a penny I've spent uh, or, or any time I've spent on my mental health and I wish it was more normalized. Hello. So my question is, hoping that you have watched the new Disney movie, Turning Red. Uh, if you haven't, then it's just that the girl turns into this really big red panda whenever she has this kind of emotional outburst. So my question is, what would you turn into during your emotional outburst? What would you like to turn into? It doesn't have to be an animal. It could be whatever you want to be. 
Kim. <laughs> what would I like to turn into? I would like to turn into a flamethrower. I generally turn into a bunny, however. <laughs> but sometimes it's a bunny with sharp teeth that has access to a flamethrower. I think I'd turn into something with wings, like a hawk or an owl or something, and just be able to like, I'm going away from this for a minute, be until I can come back down. Because emotional outburst doesn't have to be angry, right? It can be like just big feelings. Yeah, like happy. Yeah, and I, I, it's not escaping them for me. It's having a little bit of distance for a second until I can like, maybe gain a little perspective on whatever I'm feeling. Then I can come back down and either land nicely or like, ah. <laughs> All I can, the talents. Sorry. No. Done. All I can see, feel, and hear right now is this black tornado. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I, I, I get that. Then I'm, I'm fine minutes later and just want to be friends. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, like, I really am. So that, yeah, like, I just want, that's what I actually am. I'm like, all right, oh, no, it's, I'm so... How'd your house get that way? <laughs> um, I don't know. I get mad all the time, but I'm also very confrontational. <laughs> Big surprise. Um, so, I don't... Yeah, I'm pretty good at not staying mad for too long. I suppose my instinct was to say mirror, because I would love to, like, if I was angry at, about something or to somebody, just to be go... Just to go to them like, you see what you're doing? Can you stop? See how shitty this is? Fuck off. <laughs> That's all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. I'm like, I mean a tornado like about a little one, a wee one. A wee one. They could go around your house. More respect. Yeah. Like a cartoon yeah. tornado. Yeah. 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 No, that's very like my daughter too. She's very like, oh, I've expressed myself. What's your problem? And I'm like, ah, 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 ah. Exactly. <laughs> it's so beautiful when you can just like move through an emotion quickly like that. And then we all are like pulling the pokey things out of her book. Like, okay, oh, glad you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So as like strong, awesome women, I was wondering what you guys would want to instill in like your daughters or just young women in general. Well, I think there is, I, I, I think I have spent so much of my life being responsible for other people's experiences. Like, I need to take care of your feelings and I need to modify my needs so that you don't feel obligated and I need to take into account. And love means making you feel okay and you, 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 you. And I fucking wish, and fortunately I have a child who's already wired this way, I wish more women knew that one of the most loving fucking acts we can do is love ourselves first and feed the world with our leftovers. That's exactly what I was going to say. More pointed towards my relationship with my daughters and what I really, really, I grew up uh, feeling like I was, in terms of parenting, I feel like I was, grew up constantly worried and caring for my, my parents and I don't want that stress on my daughter. So whenever uh, me or Jose, and it doesn't really happen anymore because we've practiced this, um, when we come home and we're stressed about something, I can sense that Valentina, my daughter, will will be like, is you know, you're okay, or or it's just it's okay, things will be okay. Like you can just see that she's trying to make things okay for the room, and I'm very quick to go, this is not your job. I tell her that I go, my emotions are not your job. It is my job to take care of you. You do not take care of mom. Because I feel like probably a lot of us, it could be generational, were raised with our parents having big emotions and not expressing to their kids that it wasn't their job. Because even if they didn't mean to make it our jobs, the energy for a small child to absorb that energy, they don't know what to do but to make it all better. And we, I did the same thing with her girlfriends when she was having a birthday party and there were some of her friends that were left out. And she's like, I don't want them to feel bad, so I'm going to invite them. I said, you invite them if you want them to come, not because they feel bad. There are other ways to make a pe person feel loved eventually down the line. You do what you want to do first and take care of people's, 
peel in seconds, so yes. That. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Thank you. Yes, you had a killer. Hi. Hello. Hello. My name is Allison, and I would like to know what's your favorite thing about going to conventions and getting to meet all of your fans? Getting to meet all of your fans. Are you kidding? It's like a love fest for however many hours in three days. <laughs> I feel like every weekend I'm always like, oh my god, here we go, here we go, oh god, here we go. And then I get here, and it's so much fun. Every single weekend I do this. It's the travel, the airplane travel is what's exhausting, and so I always equate that with the conventions. The conventions are actually pretty fun. Uh, and I like to joke around. I apologize, yesterday I for sure went to the green room and was like, is that too much? <laughs> so yeah, I gonna fuck the shit out of Chris Evans. Um, I, don't know if <laughs> I did, I asked a number of people going, is that, is that bad? <laughs> Well, I hope he reads those tweets. <laughs> Anywho, he's your favorite, Chris. No, it was a question that I totally, it wasn't even the question <laughs> at all. I just was able to maneuver it somehow into, yes, I will fuck the shit out of Chris Evans. So, the truth is out there. <laughs> so, meeting the fans and possibly hooking up with Chris Evans is your final answer. Yes, yeah. That's what I love so much about the Creation Entertainment Supernatural Conventions. <laughs> same. Same answer. But Michael Fassbender. I like, I like the evolution. I like watching people who say... They know who they are, but they aren't there yet. And I watch them become that. And that lets me have the same permission. So I look at who I was when I started this, and knowing who I wanted to be, but I wasn't there yet, and watching people become who they say they wanted to be, and be that, has let me do the same thing. So it's really fucking special to me. I, we, I feel like we caught the very end. We caught the very. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not a con until Kim cries. We wait backstage, wa watching patiently. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm happy. Okay, good. Those are happy tears. Okay, good. Well, how did it go, ladies? It was good. Great. Yeah. Great. We got them. They're out there. Good. <laughs> All right, give it up one more time. Yeah.